This is the ZSU-234 Schilke 1100th scale kit from Svezda. It's a self-propelled quad AA gun system from the company's Hot War series of modern vehicles. The Schilke provided close-in anti-aircraft protection for Soviet tank and motor rifle regiments. If we look at the back of the box, there's a foreview of the completed kit. The assembly has 29 parts, quite a few for a Svezda 1100th kit. The finished kit is 6.7cm long. I've had this kit in the review pile for a while, but I need it for a tournament, so now I'm going to build it. Let's look inside. There are two sprues of olive green plastic parts, as well as a one-page instruction manual and a decal sheet. The instructions break down the assembly into a number of steps. The decal sheet is pretty simple, with just individual number decals you can combine to make whatever number you want. There are no national markings or other insignia here. If we look at the first sprue, this has the upper hull, upper side and lower turret pieces, the guns and some radar parts. As usual, the construction here uses multiple hull and turret parts with internal bracing pieces. The complex engineering is required for the snap fit nature of this kit. The second sprue has the lower hull, hull sides, one piece tracks and the rest of the radar parts. It also has both the hull and turret bracing pieces. As is normal with Svezda kits, the track detail is simplified, but the suspension and road wheels are detailed enough. There is plenty of detail here and this should build up into a nice looking kit. So let's go ahead and start assembly. Step 1 on the instructions is the turret. Snip the guns and the mounting pieces from the sprue and clean them up. Attach these to the turret internal bracing piece. Make sure the bracing piece is the right way up. The three posts go towards the bottom while the three sockets you can see here should face upwards. Then cut free the lower, rear and side turret pieces and attach those to the bracing piece as well. Next comes the turret top. Cut this and then attach it to the turret assembly, making sure to press it firmly in place to avoid any gaps. Some glue will help hold all this in place. There are still a few details to add to the turret. Cut out and assemble the radar pieces. The radar supports are two parts which fit together. These are keyed with a post and socket. Then push the radome and the backing piece together. This assembly is designed to elevate, but you might want to glue it into a fixed position. Here is the completed turret with the radar, commander's searchlight and other details added. I left off part A23, the cover for the guns, because this is just loose and if I glued it in place it would stop the guns elevating. Now we can move on to the hull. Cut out the internal bracing piece, the lower hull and suspension side plates. Push the bracing piece into the hull, making sure the angled pins face forward and upwards. Then add the hull side plates. Make sure to push these firmly onto the pins on the bracing piece to get a gap-free fit. Do the same with the hull front and rear pieces. If you take some care, these fit together well. Again, some glue might help hold the parts. Once these are assembled, the hull top piece comes next. There are three positioning posts here to attach and guide it. Again, take a bit of care here to avoid gaps. The hull rear also has a stowage box and the ubiquitous Soviet unditching beam all as a single piece. This has positioning pins so it fits in and stays in place. Then there are the tracks and road wheels. Snip these off and use the positioning posts and holes to attach them to the hull. The toothed drive sprocket should be at the rear of the vehicle. That's the build complete. Here's the finished product. This is a fairly complex build and it takes a bit of care to get it all together without any gaps. The gun cover piece is not attached to anything so either fix the guns into position and glue it on, otherwise delete it. If you leave it loose it'll fall off and get lost. But this kit does build into a first rate replica of the iconic Soviet AA vehicle. It's a welcome kit to have available in plastic. Detail is good and the finished product really looks the part. Let's look at some history. Schilke is a self-propelled anti-aircraft gun system. It was developed in the 1960s to provide close-in air defence for Soviet troops and armoured units, filling the close-range dead zone of divisional missile armed systems. Developed to replace the earlier ZSU-57-2 57mm gun system, the Schilke mounts four water-cooled 23mm cannon in a fully rotating turret. The high rate of fire makes it very effective against low-flying ground attack aircraft and helicopters. The guns are loaded with a mix of incendiary fragmentation and armour-piercing tracer rounds. 
Each gun has about 500 rounds. Shilka has a J-band fire control tracking radar that can detect aircraft out to a range of 20 kilometres. While the radar does have good anti-jamming capabilities, it does suffer from ground clutter interfering with tracking targets flying at low level. There's a backup optical tracking system. Initial models had some issues with the gun cooling system, which resulted in overheating and occasionally with guns running away and continuing to fire until the ammunition was exhausted. However, later improvements have largely eliminated this issue. The chassis is developed from the GM series of tracked vehicles and uses some components from the PT-76 amphibious light tank. While Shilka is very manoeuvrable, it's a bit underpowered for its weight. Soviet motor rifle and tank regiments included two four-vehicle anti-aircraft platoons. Initially, this was a mix of Shilkas and ZSU-57 twos, but by the early 70s, the 57mm guns were replaced by SA-9 Gaskin or SA-13 Gopher short-range missile systems. Longer range missile systems were fielded at divisional level. In the 80s, motor rifle and tank regiments increased their air defence to a three battery battalion. This was usually one battery of Shilkas or the later Tunguska gun systems, a battery of SA 13 Gopher, and a battery of manned portable SA 18 missiles. Operationally, Shilkas were fielded 600 to 1000 metres behind the combat forces, providing close in air defence against low flying threats. Shilkas have also been used against ground targets where the high rate of fire makes them effective against troops and light vehicles. However, Shilkas' armour is thin, so it's vulnerable to return fire and won't stand up against anti-tank weapons. Although largely replaced in Russian service, Shilka is still a capable weapon system in widespread use. If we look at the Soviet Shilka AA platoon in Team Yankee, it's a tank unit. Courage is a 4+, morale is 3+, and remount is 3+. Skill is 5 plus. Cold War Soviets were still largely conscript troops. Assault is 6 and counterattack is 5 plus. These guys won't wade into close combat. They're hit on a 3 plus, pretty standard for Soviet forces. Armour protection is minimal, with top, front, and side armour all one, so best to keep these in cover where you can increase their survivability. Tactical move is 10 inches or 25 centimetres, with dash speeds from 14 inches through terrain up to 24 inches on the road. Cross is 3+. plus. This is OK. Two-thirds of the time they'll cross an obstacle for you. The only weapon stat line is for the 23mm 2A7 AA gun. This has a range of 20 inches or 50 centimetres. You might think this is a bit short and you'd be right. This is the effective range against ground targets. The radar special rule gives the guns a 32 inch or 80 centimetres range against aircraft and helicopters and the added bonus is you don't pay the plus one range penalty when engaging targets over 16 inches. The rate of fire is six halted and four moving, and the dedicated AA special rule means you can engage air targets at your normal rate of fire. So the Shilka puts out a hail of shells into an aircraft's path, giving you lots of chances for a hit. The anti-tank is six, so you have a reasonable chance of effective fire against unarmoured and lightly armoured tank teams. However, firepower is only five plus. Shilka is also relatively cheap, costing 2 points for a 2 vehicle platoon, or 4 points for 4. At 1 point each for a weapon system that gives anti-air protection and engages light ground targets with a good rate of fire, this is an attractive option. However, they're not very survivable, so use them from cover to keep them safe from return fire. So that's Svezda's ZSU-23-4 Shilka. It's a nice if a bit complex kit to build that ends up with a great looking little vehicle. This is a solid and cost-effective alternative to Battlefront's resin and metal offerings for Team Yankee.